All right. So Brooklyn Nine Nine just came out with its final episode, the series finale. Uh, and I'm gonna go over my thoughts about the series uh, as a whole, and um, the 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 series finale, um, because this is a show that you know I have uh, a lot of thoughts about, a lot of opinions about, and uh, um, you know I've thought about making videos on on TV and movie stuff before and uh never really had any motivation to do it until until right now pretty much so um yeah I'm just going to recap my thoughts on the entire series and then at the end I'll talk about the finale because I don't think it was good J- just going to put that out there I don't think it was good if you haven't seen Brooklyn Nine Nine or the finale or anything, there's going to be spoilers. Um, so go do that. I know not many people are going to watch this, but you know, I just want to vent my thoughts. Um, yeah. So uh, let's start at the beginning, I guess. I watched when I started watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, I would have been 14 or 15. Uh, seasons 1 to 3 had come out. And I think 4 was on the way. And I loved it. It was a great show. It went straight up into my top 3. Uh, which at the time was Parks and Rec. Way up top. And then The Office and then Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Sort of um, fighting it out. Um, I think it... it yeah... A lot of strong characters. Um, it was funny, which, you know, for a stupid little kid um, is a big thing. You know, a uh, show make you go, ha-ha, you like. So, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, I thought... Yeah. So, yeah, it was good. Um, then season four came out and, um, with it was probably one of the best episodes they've ever done, which is Moo Moo. Um, that episode about, uh, Terry getting pulled over or like arrested by some, uh, cop because he was black. Um, and they have to explain, you know, racism to the kids. I thought it was a fantastic episode. I also think that it completely destroyed the series. <laughs> Which may seem counterintuitive, but I think that like they just looked at the ratings after that, saw that it did so well and were like, "All right, we're going to make this show only political. We're going to just focus on the politics and oh, it's just frustrating because there's so much potential. Season 4 is great. Season 5, pretty good, I think. Um, my favorite episode from the whole series comes from s- Season 5, which is uh, The Box with... I don't know what his, what his name is. It's like Randall or something. Um, or maybe that's his character in some show. But um, him as... They're just f- fully interrogating him the whole time. Um, you know, it's just a classic, classic episode. And I think it's it's easily the best that they ever did. Which is interesting because it strays from like typical, you know, um, sitcom structures of like an A plot and a B plot. And, you know, the A plot stuff happens, the B plot stuff seems sort of... Uh, disconnected and then they join up at the end and um, so I think that that episode is brilliant honestly (laughs) I loved it Um, but apart from that season 5 was you know I could tell that the 
the show was starting to go downhill hill a bit. And I think that that's something to do with watching it um, come out one series at a time. Because pretty much every show that I've watched that are my favourites, I've just binge-watched the whole thing. I haven't watched it as it comes out. I just watch it, um, you know, all at once. And I can I can look at it as a whole thing rather than just, like, my opinions being shaped every season, which I think is um, what, what made me like this show less, to be honest. Um, you know, my favorite shows like Community and Arrested Development and Parks and Rec, I just watched from start to finish um, in like a week. And... Yeah, it's just, um, I mean, I guess you could argue that Arrested Development isn't, uh, finished yet, but, you know, anything after season three doesn't really count. Um, so yeah, season five, pretty good. You could tell it was going downhill. Um, I don't know whether it was season five or season six, but, um, okay, big thing to note first. In between Season 5 and Season 6, Fox dropped Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And, I don't know the technical term of it, but they, um, you know, they weren't gonna, they weren't gonna renew it for Season 6. And then NBC picked them up, like, immediately afterwards. Which, I think is another thing that ruined the show for me. Um, I think... After season six, or during season six even, the writing just got lazy and, you know, NBC allows you to swear with um, with it being bleeped out, which I hate. I, I don't hate it for, like, shows in general. I hate it for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine-Nine spent five years world-building this, like, world where these guys don't swear, like, at all, and then, out of nowhere, Jake's just like, I thought you said, uh, you, this bitch wants a cock in her ass, and you're like, okay, so this show is gonna be different now, um, and it feels like, during season six, that's the, the big joke of every episode is, you know, Out of nowhere, someone swears. That's the laziest writing ever. Like, (laughs) seriously. I, like, The Office, Parks and Rec, they do it well. They use it sparingly, and they use it, you know, as, like, a surprise moment. And it's funny. But Brooklyn Nine-Nine just decided we're going to have one swear joke every episode. And it's going to be, you know, the big the big joke, it's gonna be the funny laughter, blah, 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 I don't know whether it was season six finale or season seven finale, I forget, where Amy's pregnant, and she's having a baby, and her and Hitchcock just, like, do this big old swear thing, and it's just bleeped out for 25 seconds, it's just straight up bleep noises, it's not funny, like, (laughs) It's not, you can, it's just not funny. Seriously. Why, why do people think it's funny? And I've said this before on like, I used to go on forums and stuff and I've said, you know, um, it's not, I think it's ruining the show. I think it's, it's lazy. I think it's whatever. And people are like, oh, it's more realistic, you know, people in a, people, people in a police precinct swear all the time. Who cares? These people don't. We've seen for five years that these people don't. And there has been smart writing to work around the fact that they can't swear. For instance, season three. Boyle dropping out of the vent, hitting the guy over the head and saying, yippee kayak, other buckets. That wouldn't have happened. That would not have happened. That is a classic line that is 
amazing and it would not have happened. It just straight up would not have happened. And it's just frustrating to see that uh, a show with so much potential... First of all, I think it went on way too long. I think eight seasons is too long for a show. I know The Office went for nine, maybe? And personally, I don't mind seasons eight or nine of The Office. But um, I do think it goes downhill. And um, I don't think that seasons six, seven, or eight work for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um... And there's an episode in season six where um, it's trying to... It's about misogyny or whatever. It's called He Said, he Said She Said, I think. Um, and it's about... It's pretty much the Moo Moo episode, but it's about sexism rather than racism. But instead of being like, you know, here's this thing that's happening in society... And, you know, we're trying to do whatever about it. But, you know, it's sl- it's slow progress. It's slow whatever. People aren't great all the time. Instead, this episode's just like, men suck. And just straight up, men suck. And it's always been that way. And it looks like it's always going to be that way. And it doesn't provide any solutions. It doesn't provide anything. And when the ratings are bad, it's like, oh, it's just men giving it bad ratings. Yeah, because you insulted all of us. Which, I mean, is the point, I guess. But, like, give us a potential solution or something. Don't just be like, all men are sexist and hate women or whatever which is not the case at all it's not all men but you know that's my opinion I guess because some people would say otherwise um I think that season 6 then just it's one of my least favourite seasons uh, season 7 is definitely my least favourite. Season 6 is a close second least favourite. But it just gets worse. Like, I mean, not worse than that episode. That episode's pretty bad. But it's... There's this episode where it's talking about um, mental health and you know, Jake having to come to terms with the fact that, you know, it's okay to seek treatment or whatever and blah, 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 which is good. I mean, in premise, it's good. But there's no real stigma around therapy anymore, you know? It's not like a a massive deal for people to go to therapy. I think that... Um... It, it didn't need to be this entire episode. And it's not... It shouldn't have been that hard for... I mean, I guess it's a joke that Jake doesn't understand that... You know... The guy without the daddy is the one with daddy issues, but... It's just frustrating to watch. That's what it is. It's frustrating to watch. It's frustrating to watch one of my favorite shows go so unbelievably downhill and crash and burn. And and people just like applauding it for it. It's it's annoying. I mean, I honestly can't even rem- remember season 7. <laughs> I think I watched it once. I didn't do any research before starting recording this. I didn't watch over the series again or anything. I literally just watched the finale and thought I need to talk about this to to just anyone who will listen. Um, season seven, what even happened? I mean, more swearing jokes, which is you know it's just going to be a staple in this show now. Um, I'm honestly 
glad it's over. Not because, you know, I'm hated, I hated it, it, but because it, like, it'll make the good stuff less drowned out by the awful stuff that's been coming out. <sighs> Season 7. Uh, so Captain Holt gets demoted, I think. And he has to work his way back up by just working as a beat cop for a year. Which goes past in one episode or something. Which is ridiculous. Like, why would you do that? It's... I mean... It's no... Like, they they have these conflicts and then they just... And you think it's going to be like a season-long thing that they have to solve. But it's just over. You know? I mean... Amy's got to get pregnant and there's a... Having a rough time getting pregnant or whatever. And they're like, oh no, this sucks. And then this... It's, the episode goes for 100 months. And it's... And then it's all good. You know? And then the next... Ep- okay. The heists. The heists are bad. The first three maybe. Good. Maybe four. And then it just got old. And that's something I want to talk about about the finale. Because the finale of season 8 is a heist. Which is a terrible idea. Oh, it's the worst idea ever. You're having emotional goodbyes during a heist where literally everything could that, that, that people say can't be trusted. You're... You're summing up the whole series under a layer of, like, irony and sarcasm. It's not... It's not good. I refuse to believe that uh, Mike Schur had anything to do with Brooklyn Nine-Nine after season four. Maybe season five. Because he went, like him going on to The Good Place. The Good Place is a good show. The Good Place is a good show. And the finale is amazing. What happened here? I'll get I'll get to it later because we need to st- go through season eight. First of all, okay, this is a bit that I'm very angry about. Captain Holt and Kevin are like breaking up or they've broken up or something. Because quote it's not a direct quote, but you know, twenty twenty was hard time to be a black police officer. What? You're telling me that you were together during the 80s or something, the 70s and 80s, when racism is an all-time high and you're being... What? What is even the word? I'm so mad. What is the word? It's discriminated. You're being discriminated against constantly your entire life. In the 70s and 80s. And you're still together. And then 2020 happens. And you split up. Are you insane? What is this? Who wrote this? Someone help me. Oh. (laughs) It's just impossible to believe. It's just impossible to believe. The first episode of season 8 was a disaster, in my opinion. It's just terrible. Not good. Not good. I was talking about COVID and and Black Lives Matter and all cops are bastards or whatever. Which I think, I honestly think that um, it was mass hysteria. Some mass psychological thing from um, the stress of the pandemic. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, But, seriously, who wrote this? And then, 
it feels like the next few episodes are just completely pointless because the second episode's all about Holt and Kevin getting back together. And then I don't even remember half of the episodes anymore because they're just so forgettable. But like maybe the third something, one of them is like, oh, they got back together and they're doing counseling. But guess what? They're separated again. Okay. Why? <laughs> Why bring them back together? Just have, just have them be like, okay, we're, we're having these troubles and let's go to therapy. Which I guess was the you know, point trying to get across. Something, okay, I just want to retroactively mention the only thing I liked about season seven was Cool Charles. In episode two, Charles wears Rose's jacket, and that is funny. He think, he like gets all this confidence and everyone starts to like him, and that is funny. And then as soon as he takes it off, he starts making his terrible um, sexual innuendos again. And it's hilarious. <laughs> um, that's it. That is the only part I liked about season seven. Season 8 had good episodes, but they didn't mean anything. I mean, this episode 2 was alright, but nothing happened. I mean, you can't waste your good episodes on literally nothing. I don't... I, li- I literally... it Like, season 6 to 8 is so unbelievably forgettable. And I just don't... I, I, I can't. I can't deal with it. I'm... I'm glad the show's over. And if I rewatch the show, I'm going to stop at season five. But... Let's... Okay. Let's talk about the finale. So yeah, it's this big heist. Everyone's saying goodbye... Um, because everyone's leaving, apparently, and, you know, it's just dumb. It is a dumb premise. Just have everyone leave. Like, Parks and Rec just had a thing where they were all fixing a swing, and they would flash forward to the future and, and see where they would go and what they would do, and it was it was good. The Good Place had a similar thing where they, you know, they're allowed to stay in heaven for, or the Good Place, for eternity. And then once they feel their life is complete, they walk through a door that where they stop existing, which makes sense, you know, because eternal life is eternal pain at a certain point. Um... And yeah, it just goes through all the main characters showing, um, you know, what they did up to the point where they walk through the door. And it's emotional and it's done well. But this is just insane. Like, first of all, the heists are bad. From season five, the heists are predictable, boring, rubbish. Pretty much. Um, Literally every time I watch one, I think of that heist episode from Rick and Morty. That's like... um, They go to the thing, and then whatever, and then... Big reveal! We already double-crossed you, and that's what I wanted you to think, and... I I don't know what I'm so I just I liked the show man I liked the show why did you have to do this to my show please please why did you have to do this to my show man why did you have to do this to my show I liked it so much and you just ruined it for me and human beings experience recency bias, which means I'm going to remember it as being garbage for the rest of my life. (sighs) 
another thing about the heist episode. Hitchcock wins. You've got... You've got... Big emotional episode. Big finale. And the guy who wins is the one who nobody wants to win. And then they come back. At the end, it's like a, a year later, they come back and it's like, we're doing it again. We're doing the heist again. I can't deal with, I can't deal with it, man. I can't deal with it, man. I can't deal with it, man. Oh. So yeah, that was my rant about Brooklyn Nine-Nine and how it is, uh, used to be one of my favorite shows. Don't let my opinions formulate your opinions because I tend to watch shows and then immediately take, like, I'll, I'll, I'll watch a video on an analysis of it and then I'll, um, just absorb the opinion of the person with the video that has done the video. Don't do that. It's not good. Watch a bunch of videos. I'm a cynical, uh, contrarian idiot. Don't listen to me. I just needed a, I just needed a vent because I liked this show. I did. And now I don't. Simple as that. Thanks.